totem poles are a dime a dozen north of sixty-three degrees but only catch the lying eskimo vowed that they dropped out of the frigid northern skies solar stiff by charles a stopher phobos five gazed at the white expanse ahead trying to determine where his ship would crash something was haywire in the fuel system of his inner star runabout he was losing altitude fast so fast that all five pairs of his eyes couldn't focus on a place to land five pairs of arms each pair about three feet apart on the log-like body pushed buttons and rotated controls frantically but to no avail in a few short minutes it would be all over for phobos five even if by some miracle he remained unhurt after crashing he would die shortly thereafter the frigid climatic conditions of the third planet were deadly to mercurians he thought once of donning his spacesuit but decided against it that would merely prolong the agony from planet three when one has a smashed space cruiser there is no return phobos five knew that death was riding with him in the helpless ship the situation did not necessarily dismay him mercurians are philosophers phobos five ceased to manipulate the unresponding controls stretching his trunk-like torso to its full twenty feet four heads gazed through observation ports at the four points of the compass while the remaining head dulcitorily watched the instrument panel since die he must phobos five would meet his end stoically and five pairs of stumpy arms folded over five chests in a coordinated gesture of resignation phobos five thought fleetingly of his wife lingua four and remembered with some annoyance that she was the author of his present predicament a social climber phobos five thought to himself but aside from that a good wife and mother in addition to being a reigning beauty lingua four was tall even for a mercurian already she had scaled seven dregs or in earth terms fourteen feet and was beginning to show evidence of a fifth head five heads were rarely found on females and phobos five was justly proud of his good fortune in all mercury at the present time he knew of but two females possessing five heads and soon lingua four would be a third of her sex to be thus endowed yes thought phobos five a woman to be proud of for today after three vargs of marriage the memory of her thin trunk with four pairs of eyes laughing mischievously filled his five brains with flame slim as a birch she stood in his memory and eight eyes whispered lovers thoughts across space and time phobos five recalled his five minds from their nostalgic reverie and gazed at the contour of the earth that was rushing up to meet him white blazing white reflecting the rays of the midnight sun covering the region as far as the eye could reach good thought phobos five the polar regions that means the end will come quickly one or two seconds at the most of that bitter cold would be enough turning away from the windows phobos five let his thoughts return to lingua four to phobos two his son and his home on the first planet from the sun ah that is the place to live thought phobos the temperature is an unchanging three hundred and twenty-seven degrees just comfortably warm where one can enjoy a life of warmth and ease too bad that he would not live to see it again thirty vargs he reflected is such a short life with luck perhaps he would have lived to see a hundred vargs slip by and perhaps in time he would have added three more heads and five dregs in length to his towering trunk he thought of phobos too and wondered idly if his son would also visit the barbarian worlds to collect data for lingua four he wished that he could have seen more of phobos too that's an up-and-coming lad he thought 
not quite two vargs old and two heads already yes indeed he's quite a boy phobos five remembered proudly maybe his mother will keep him at home instead of running him all over the universe to get material for her committees he wished that lingua four would settle down and be content as a housewife but he doubted that she would social ambition was boring like a termite under her bark lingua four was determined to be the first lady of arbor the capital city of mercury to this end lingua four had labored unceasingly she was president of half the women's clubs on arbor she could always be depended upon to furnish the best in new and diverting subjects she headed almost all the committees for aid or research on any type of problem it was owing to lingua four being president of the committee for undernourished arboreans that phobos five was making this ill-starred trip his purpose was to capture a few of the upright divided trunk animals that inhabited the third planet they were to be transported to mercury and given over to scientific study as to their edible qualities if it were found that the divided trunk creatures were fit for mercurian consumption the problem of undernourishment would no longer exist since the supply of divided trunks was seemingly inexhaustible mercurians had made expeditions to the third planet before and every report concluded with divided trunk creatures increasing in number privately phobos five doubted the possibility of using the divided trunks for food since the last expedition once again reported a complete lack of captives due to the frail and tenuous bodies of the divided trunks then too transportation and preservation opposed a tremendous problem not to mention the difficulty of trying to eat something that might vaporize on your fork but then these questions may never arise he decided for of all the reports perused by phobos five not one expedition had succeeded in bringing a divided trunk to mercury all reports were read to the last letter by phobos five before assembling equipment for his own trip in the reports he had noted many of the difficulties of the earlier missions planet three was impossible for mercurians without a heated spacesuit the temperature of the planet was so low that it would literally freeze a mercurian stiff in a matter of seconds the casualties on the early expeditions had been numerous many mercurians had succumbed to the bitter cold due to flaws in spacesuits and other accidents a break in the suit meant instant death the victims of such mishaps were invariably buried in the isolated sparsely inhabited polar region to avoid alarming the divided trunk creatures it was strange mused phobos five that the divided trunks were seemingly unable to bear the slightest increase in temperature their bodies disintegrated upon contact with a mercurian some were roped and dragged from a distance up to the doors of the spaceship but no inhabitant of planet three had been closer to mercury than the airlock of the space cruiser as the divided trunk people were dragged into the airlock warm air from the ship would be pumped into the lock to dispel the frigid air of planet three as the warmth of mercury enveloped the divided trunks they became quite red began to melt and finally dissolved into a gaseous state leaving a small pile of ashes and a disagreeable odor in the airlock that sometimes lingered for days phobos five believed that he had a solution for these obstacles in the path of scientific study of the divided trunks he had decided to use guile in place of strength for this reason he had come alone and in a small space runabout to put his solution to the test but his solution now could never be tried he remembered morosely in the aft compartment phobos five had constructed a refrigeration plant by maintaining a constant degree of frigidity he hoped to deliver a pair of each species of divided trunks to mercury he hoped especially to capture a complete set and perhaps a few over 
to make up for breakage and losses as to what form of subsistence the divided trunks were accustomed to he had no idea whatsoever he had intended to bring samples of earth vegetation and anything else that might have suggested a source of food for the divided trunks the thought too had occurred to him that possibly the divided trunk creatures ate one another on the possibility of this phobos five had determined to capture three black ones three white ones three yellow ones three browns and three reds and three of any other color he might find he rather doubted that more colors or combination of colors existed all previous expedition reports had mentioned only the five colors however phobos five had determined to keep several eyes open on the off chance that he might find a new and different species his refrigerator was muddled along the architectural lines of the dens of the divided trunks the main room of the refrigerator opened to the outside of the ship by means of a small airlock a mercurian size airlock was not needed for the divided trunks as few had been found to be much over three dregs in height winches and cables to pull the divided trunks into the refrigerator were installed in the refrigerator room itself to avoid burning the divided trunks with hot cables from other parts of the ship in addition phobos five had cunningly devised a refrigerated trap this too was designed to simulate the caves of the divided trunk creatures but was smaller it was constructed with entrances readily seen and exits well hidden phobos five had expected great things from his trap he had conceived of the idea after reading the report of a mercurian expedition that explored the dens of the divided trunks at some place marked coney island according to the reports the divided trunks showed no hesitancy in entering these types of dens in fact the writer of the report gave it as his opinion that the divided ones perhaps played games in these sorts of caves it also mentioned that some of the dens were equipped with flat shiny surfaces that cast reflections or images phobos five had incorporated the image-making surfaces into his trap design a pity that all this effort might be wasted thought phobos as he once more turned to the observation port to check his remaining distance from the planet's surface seeing that his time was short phobos five turned all five faces forward in the mercurian gesture of disdain for death a moment later came the shock a week later the proprietor of a novelty shop in fairbanks watched two natives with their dog team pulling something log-like through the snow toward the trading post turning to a customer he remarked here comes kitch and aku dragging another totem pole guess that kitch must be the biggest liar ever produced by the eskimos he tried to tell me that totem poles fall from the sky says he can always find one when he sees it fall because it's so hot it melts the snow around it personally i think he should be elected president of the liars club but i'll buy the totem pole anyway those pesky tourists always whittle a chunk out of my totem pole for a souvenir i'm glad he's bringing me another one the storekeeper concluded the one he sold me last year is about whittled away the end of solar stiff by charles a stopher